Okay. Hey, everybody. Well, welcome to this talk. Um, I'm David, the writer director behind the signifier. Um, so the signifiers, for those who haven't played the game, it's a techno thriller where you have to explore the real world and also enter the unconscious realms of the human mind. You have to use technology and find clues to solve puzzles and rubble mysteries and find the truth. Um, so this is a game that below this high level description is based on psychoanalytic and AI concepts in a very actually researched and deep way um, with lots of passion and research and time behind it. And where narrative visuals and gameplay mechanics are meant are designed to talk about these subjects in an intertwined way. Whether we succeeded on that or not, I guess you would have to judge for yourself, but um, but it had intention and, and it, it, it's been one of the most positive things about the game with the story and, uh, and the way it treats its concepts. So if you haven't taken a look, I encourage you to play it. Um, so, so yeah, that was the, the, the main challenge in terms of vision. So in this short talk, I'm going to discuss the difficulties we had in trying to marry entertainment and the passion behind wanting to tackle these complex subjects in a way that felt natural and core to the experience, instead of like of a narrative layer separate from the mechanics themselves. Um, we really wanted the mechanics to speak about these themes, right? And, and to actually take tackle on these themes in a way that, that was true to the interactive medium, right? And, and in, a, in a way that the, it, it couldn't be experienced in any other way that really took advantage of it being a game instead of like, oh, if, if it was a movie, you know, uh, we could have treated the same things the same way. Really wanted to talk about the unconscious and the and, and AI through this angle, right? So the main focus will be on the design struggles, but I can tell you that the production struggles, this type of talk on its own, one that could be a little depressing, I guess. <laughs> You'll end up feel, feeling sorry for us, but that's for another talk, most likely. So the design, before going into how we got to the current design, I want to talk a, a bit about the design of the final game for those who haven't played it. Um, in, in summary, the game has a, ended up with a three layer investigation process where you go to the real world. For example, this is the signifier, the dream walker machine. You explore for clues, et cetera. It's like a first person adventure game, dialogue, et cetera but you also go into the mind, right? Where you explore memories and dreams. And in the mind, there are three layers, which is, you can see right here, there's the real world. This is the, like a, an abandoned apartment. And this is a memory you're investigating of, of someone who's already dead. And in, and in the memories, you can switch between two states that are investigated, uh, interpreted by, a, by an AI, right? One is the objective state where the subjective experience is filtered out. And the other is the subjective space where an AI tries to interpret not only how the memory was seen and heard, but also how it was felt, which is like, of course, the, um, the, the longest, so to speak, uh, mental road you have to travel in order to get there, right? Uh, so, so what if an AI was trained to interpret the unconscious and the emotions, right? And, and then we would have to interpret that interpretation. So the game plays with this, with these concepts and, and forces the player to kind of investigate and, and figure out what things may mean, interpret layers of interpretation, think about what can AI really do uh, versus what a human could interpret. And it goes on the, uh, down that road, right? So the story starts with uh, uh, the big uh, by P of uh, the big by P of a big company, AI company, who's found dead in her apartment. And you have like this deal with the with a government agency. There's all these political struggles between technology, governments, right, and an independent researcher, which, which you are, and uh, you have to. They ask you to investigate her brain, basically, right? Um, did they extract a digital copy of her brain right after she she was she died, and uh, 
you have to investigate it and find clues, right? So there's also the whole ethical concern there. Um, so the main story is really about this, this woman, Joanna, and how she ended up dead and what led to her death. And that's the big psychoanalytic angle of the, of the game, right? And by discovering these um, psychoanalytic uh, things and, uh, and, and understanding her mind, you start understanding what really happened to her in the real world. So as you can see, it's a very complex subject, very ambitious one. And uh, yeah, I'm, it's a short talk, but I'm trying to go, I'm gonna try to go through the, how we actually got here and, and all the struggles we had. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, there, there are more mechanics. You can enter a different memory, right? Change state. There are what they're called defense mechanisms, which are an AI interpretation of parts of the unconscious that are like aggressive or, or maybe don't want to be seen. Um, there's raw data, which is data that you can't really um, understand, that the machine could understand, so you have to interpret it, like you do in CAPTCHA codes, right? Uh, um, AIs are still not that good to interpret about, to interpret the sub, uh, some out of context things, so humans are better than that, so you have to interpret this. So as you can see, these puzzle mechanics and things that happen are all kind of part of the narrative, right? And uh, there's time warps, you can move the time, there's these avatars where you, where you take like an entity in the subconscious, etc. right? So, so yeah, that's the current game. Um, and then, so how did we get here? How did we get to this design that this mechanics and this way to tell a story where you start exploring memories and kind of, um, get to understand a bit about AI, about the mind and, and use these concepts in the narrative and in the puzzles. So it, it, it all started with uh, an idea like, I don't know, currently it should be like 12 years ago, 11, <laughs> which uh, was like um, even coming out of uh, college or university, I don't know how you guys call it, until it's university, I think. Um, but, um, it's, it started with the idea of making a game about dreams interpretation, right? Um, I was a really big fan of psychoanalysis. And just a point of take adventure game with uh, pre-rendered backgrounds, um, Siberia style, you know, longest journey style. And just a, a game where you go into your dreams and you have to interpret things, right? Uh, that up to a moment, that was the idea, it was evolving and then well, some personal story, um, I had to get like a full-time job for many reasons and um, including having a family now. So um, that idea once was kind of frozen and, but then it started becoming something else in my free time. Um, and it eventually evolved into a five episode game where the idea was that you played four characters similar to Let's say, um, you know, I have a mouth and, and I must scream, right? That's a big inspiration of this game. And, and the idea was that you um, played five characters and um, the final character would be the character in this game, which is the psychiatrist. And, and the AI part were still kind of out of the game uh, of the idea because I was still not really researching that, but for, not being able to work on the game, um, it, it started evolving and 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 changing as time as time went by, but eventually ended with a GDD, right? Um, and and I was looking for some local funds from the government, and yeah, this is like a GDD from September 2014, <laughs> um, and uh, it was a really amateur GDD, but you can see this, the machine was already designed, and there were characters and there were five characters, right? One of them was Joanna, the, the character in this game. The idea of this version of the game, was, which was insanely ambitious and therefore therefore not doable, um, was a, a game where you played four characters. Each one had went to this uh, psychiatrist and they were offered uh, a novel treatment where instead of being like a 
regular psychoanalysis uh, you know, session, you would go into this machine that would allow you to check on your own dreams and experience them and, and, and find things about them, right? And, and try to, with the psychiatrist who was talking to you from outside, you would try to uh, figure out what happened, solve puzzles and like face your inner things, et cetera. But there was a kid, um, there was a teacher that had this repetitive dream. Um, there was this young man that was like really unbalanced and, and viewed, his, viewed himself like a, a different ways. And there was Joanna, which was the episode two, right? And the idea was at the end you find you play the the psychiatrist, which is Russell in the in the current game, and you actually face your own things, right? Um, and this, the things in the different characters would actually pass on. So this was still like a very psychoanalytic game, and uh, each character was based on different psychoanalytic studies. Uh, and the reasons why, and they had either some sort of psychosis or some sort of um, middle life breakdown, et cetera, and try to find those things through entering your own dreams, right? Um, it was insanely ambitious, and it was also ambitious because we had this, we were very passionate about this idea of, of looking at the, of, of being the mechanics a way to to talk about things and and the mechanics themselves could be interpreted right so i the idea was that for example if you were inside your head and suddenly you were like in a third person perspective you know what, what like like they say in a, in a driving when you're in a dream where you're driving right there's a lot of symbolism around around it there's there are a lot of theories but when, when you, if you have a dream about driving, it's very different if you're you're driving and you're driving yourself into like let's say uh, a black hole, or or if let's say your mother is driving and you're in the in the in the the other seat, right, or in the back seat even, that makes a whole lot of difference in in terms of symbolism and dream interpretation. So, or what if, for example, you see yourself driving from a balcony? To this black hole. So the idea was uh, in this game to actually free themselves from this, free, free itself from a from a genre, and and allow the mechanics to be um, vehicles of interpretation, right? Like for example, uh, you are going in a side, like viewing yourself in, in a in a side camera, right? And then suddenly you enter a door, and and it's a first person, but you see yourself really small. And then you see another first uh, section from the eyes of another character, and what does it all mean, right? And you have to use this um, like small genre, limited genre changes, not genre, but mechanic changes uh, to actually interpret and solve puzzles. That was the insanely ambitious concept. Considerably, I didn't have money, I didn't have a job, I, I had a full time job, I had never made a full game, I had worked in the 3D areas of, of a few projects, right? Uh, but I did mainly animation and VFX for commercials. So as you can imagine, it was insanely ambitious. Um, so, but, but they didn't stop us. <laughs> and um, we went to try to do it. We make like this GDD, this is version one, right? Um, then we had um, version two. This is uh, September version three, sorry, 2015. And there's a lot more here. Um, of course, it was still the same idea, but now we had um, a more clear we, way of, we, we decided we we're gonna, we were gonna start with Joanna because it was the story I was most interested in. And, um, and the story that actually we could make in terms of uh, you know production value because so we decided to make one episode basically and that was the episode of joanna and uh, the ai part started to come in because i wore i worked into a few photogrammetry projects and i realized that we could actually use photogrammetry to to make a way of interpreting like if you're if you're if a if an ai had images, fuzzy images from the brain, 
they could stitch it could stitch them together and get to the style of, of, of the signifier, right? And it could make a lot of sense. And it was also something that we could we knew how to produce, right? We, which was this style, right? We could go to real places, make our own places, and then make photogrammetry, glitch photogrammetry. And that's would be a very interesting way to present memories. So when I realized I could do that and I was just researching an AI, I, I said, okay, yeah, then maybe we should start with this episode. And, and make it a first person game and try to kind of narrow down, you know, the, the game to something doable. So I made, it, I made this GDD um, and I designed the, the episode, right? I showed how the way it would do it and a big et cetera. There were some dialogues in there and we actually got some funding uh, from the Chilean government, you know, uh, some art fund. It, it wasn't a lot of, a lot of money, but it allowed me to develop this with a few people outside my full-time job. <laughs> and that's a pretty fun story, the way I did that, um, but it's probably not for today. Um, so we uh, went and did uh, a small demo, right? It, it was even a vertical slice that nobody has ever played because it's, it was uh, not good enough. Right. Um, so this version of the game, you actually played with Joanna, the main character that starts dead in the court game. Um, and it was a bit more of the an initial uh, idea, right? You had, um, you played with Joanna, you started in her room, right? Um, well, it, it wasn't really finished, but it looked okay. Um, you start with her, uh, so suddenly you're, you're depressed. It, the, the whole company part was a, a bit shallower. And this um, game was about going to your session that you were offered, right? That was about interpreting your own dreams, right? So you met Russell, the character you play in the current game. Um, so we inverted the roles. I'm gonna go, gonna say, say why. And you entered your own dreams, which was kind of the initial idea, right? Um, so he says like, don't worry, it's a experimental treatment, but it's not invasive. That's the way, that's the reason why the machine is kind of designed that way. And uh, you actually enter your memories, right? And here's where it got, um, we succeeded in making this demo, I guess we're going to release it one day, um, but it doesn't look good enough, to be honest. Um, but um, it was we it was way too complex, right? I, I'm not sure if I even want to have time to go into the details of how, of how you play this game. Um, but I will say that besides the design of how you explore your memories, the biggest issue, um, because this was all exper experimental, right? It was a very experimental concept. And in a way, I felt that it was really hard to prototype it without actually having some graphics. Now, with more experience, I probably could be able to do it. At that time, I wasn't able to just, just prototype with boxes, right? Which is a huge waste, right? To make it all look good. but there was a good decision. We decided to make assets that were, since we came from animation and VFX, we decided to make assets that were um, much further in time, so to speak, from, from that current year. I mean, we, we were working with, when you work in animation with in VFX, you work with a lot more polygons, a lot of higher textures, right? And we decided to do that. So, because we knew this game was gonna take long and we decided to actually make small spaces um, that the levels would be like contained. So we could actually make them run, but also if we release the game six years from now, the assets would still, um, would still stand, so to speak, would still have um, a good enough um, value, a good, good enough look, right? So we really didn't waste the art we did, um, to be honest, we used it in the final game. So. So that was good, um, but still, it was a, a very experimental 
sort of expensive, you could say, experiment, um, but also we didn't have any financial pressure, right? Um, I had a full-time job. Um, I, I remember some of the team too. There were a few interns. So, so yeah, we just went along with it and, and experimented. So before I tell you why the design failed, the main reason this failed for me was that I realized that I wanted to tell a very deep story about Joanna, which if you go into the current signifier, you find out that it's a very complex and deep story. And it was so hard. I felt that I wasn't going to be able to go in deep enough uh, by having the player agency over that character, right? By the player having agency over that character. Um, she was too complex. She had a um, state. She was uh, depressed by the end of her life. There were many things that had to, that forced the way you, you either force the player to be one way or you either um, made the character a lot less um, complex and detailed as, as I mean, or, or you made the story more open, so to speak, right? Um, which I didn't want to. I, I really wanted to tell this the second analytic story and the deep story of Johanna, right? So I realized that by being yourself, the player, um, it was so hard to write that would, you know, check both boxes, give the player agency, and also tell the story. That was the biggest uh, disappointment for me, I guess, uh, in terms of narrative of making the game that way. And uh, yeah, I mean, well, this is, I guess, kind of known, like first person, I mean, player characters are usually like a, like, like a blank canvas or, or are a bit more adaptable, or at least are about the player. Like maybe they are not a blank, uh, uh, a blank canvas, but, but at least the player decides their, their story, what they make the decisions, right? So they can kind of, um, have some agency, right? And um, that's why most games have like uh, like more neutral, so to speak, characters. Um, but I, I still wanted to try, and I guess I was like, I don't know, uh, still learning. And um, and yeah, I mean that was the biggest mistake, so to speak. And there's still games that try to do it, and some of some of them you could say also succeed um but i didn't find it like that i could go deep enough right so and the design there was also mistakes there you had this memory reconstruction it, it the design just asked too much for the player from the player it was interesting um it, we had some good feedback from some people but for the general audience it was just too much too demanding it was like you had these rooms in the memory that you had these anomalies that didn't uh, the machine could interpret so some of them only had space but some of them also had time and the ones that had time could be put yeah this this re represented time the duplicated memory it was space right so if you put this one that had time you could actually put it up here and then interpret the anomalies and the memory would reconstruct and you would get like a different reconstruction based on where you put it, you place this emotional da data in time and in space, right? So there were like <laughs> exponential amount of uh, reconstruction here, reconstructions here that um, was like a huge creative challenge. Um, it was fun, like uh, contained, it was kind of fun to, to explore a bit what happened. And the idea was that if you place these things, you could start figuring out what the ring meant, what the doghouse meant, right? And and by placing in different moments and time, right? And and as you interpreted them and reconstructed the anomalies, uh, the memory, you could see what happened and take pictures. And and Russell was talking to you like from outside the machine. You were trying to make sense of things. And then it got a bit scary. There were defense mechanisms, and it was kind of a puzzle um, interpretation game, right? Where you have to really interpret what things meant. And after you finish your session with the memory, that became every time a bit more interesting. 
you actually go went outside of the machine and you had an interview and you had to actually interpret um like show you under you understood right um you, you gotta go right, right up sorry okay so yeah this game failed <laughs> basically um but it was a great experience we learned a lot and uh yeah then yeah this were like from story was from the very first iteration of the game before that and eventually with that experience we decided to invert yeah this is me and my friend who's a psychoanalyst analyst we would get together and discuss the character stories and eventually after that experience we decided to switch the characters and uh, the AI themes went a lot stronger, right? And um, and when we switched the characters and being Russell, the researcher, like a bit more neutral and Joanna being the one you had to investigate and she was also already dead, um, the, it was, it allowed for this powerful mystery and uh, really the big mystery of investigating her, what happened to her and it became, became more of a thriller and it added this, all this excitement that was missing from the game while still playing with the concepts, right? So yeah, I, I would love to go a bit deeply on how we evolved into this concept and these mechanics, but I can, that's kind of um, the story of how it evolved. Um, there was a lot of research on how the characters would, would dress, uh, the places they would live, and um, and yeah, but but the key thing was turning the, the, the main character, right? Um, like making the player choose another character and we added this like sort of police thriller part to make it more exciting. And, and the concepts, we polished them and the mechanics, we polished them a lot to actually be more intuitive and uh, more fun while being the mystery, the driving force, right? And that was the key things that made the game actually successful. And when we tested it, finally it says, okay, we, we realized that we we were in a, we had arrived somewhere special and yeah and then the story evolves into develop a beautiful game find a publisher etc so yeah i guess that's it um thank you for the call i don't know if uh, there's time for any questions but um happy to answer from, out, from the outside too All right, thank you very much.